Hey everyone, it's Dylan with Emerald City Hockey with the first of my scouting reports for the 2022 NHL Draft. Today is of course Shane Wright, but before we jump in, just a quick reminder to like this video and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our other great content. And if you want to see these scouting reports a month early, check out our Patreon link in the description below. Alright, I'm going to do something a little bit different for this scouting report in that I'm going to start with my player comp. I'm doing this because as I dig into Shane Wright's game and his specific way of doing things, I think it'll be important to have some context for it all. So, who is my player comp for Shane Wright? Well, if you asked him who he models his game after, it's Patrice Bergeron. Wright, especially this season, has focused greatly on his two-way play and how to be a better defender. And it's worked, but I just don't see Bergeron when I watch him. Or at least, that's not who I see the most. For that, I see fellow exceptional player status alum, John Tavares. Let's take a moment to look at why. Both are fast, but not blindingly so. They have solid size and are both strong on the puck using their leg strength to get low and create leverage, as well as a low center of gravity. Wright follows in the footsteps of Tavares and other top goal scorers as he has a nose for the net and loves to aggressively attack rebounds. I will admit, I'm making this comparison based on John Tavares at the same stage of development in his draft year rather than on the modern player. And even then, it isn't perfect. Tavares had a drive like no other, and some have criticized Wright's pace of play this year. He also hasn't shown the same killer instinct that Tavares had either, but I have a theory on that that I will touch on later. Regardless of these factors though, the comp makes for a good reminder that just because a player plays a certain style now doesn't mean they always will. The NHL changes everyone as they adjust to the speed and skill of their competition. But enough of all that, let's dig into who everyone is here for, Shane Wright. Wright has one of the stranger shooting styles of all those that I've seen. He has what I've described in the past as pushing the puck towards the net. See what I mean? I would still say he has borderline elite scoring skill, but when I think of an elite shot, this isn't what I think about. Most great shooters have fluid, strong, and quick wrist movement that allows them to have a quick release that takes goalies by surprise and gives them the torque needed for great control and accuracy. Wright, rather, gets his whole body involved with what I can only describe as a scooping or pushing motion. He'll keep his wrists further apart from each other and adds torque by twisting his shoulders and upper body. It's subtle, yes, and it does give him more speed on the shot itself but it also uses a longer and more telegraphed release. Two things, however. One, regardless of anything I saw about it being unconventional, it works and he should stick with it. I've seen too many athletes ruined by coaches tweaking mechanics to be the way it's supposed to be. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Second, nothing says it'll stay this way forever. In fact, look at that. Johnny T used to have a similar kind of shot back in the day. And so did Nathan McKinnon back when he was in Halifax. They grew and developed even more lethal wristers in the NHL. Wright can easily do the same. Besides, a lot of what makes Wright deadly is his drive to the net. Is that going to be as easy in the NHL? Of course not. But it tells me that he isn't afraid to get dirty and that he knows how to take what the defense is going to give him. Two hallmarks of goal scorers that play at any level. Wright's playmaking has hit new levels this year as he looks to be a more well-rounded player before entering the NHL. His vision has always been top-notch and his strength means that passes always get to their target on time, and more or less where they should be. He excels as more of a quick strike attacker with quick give-and-go type plays with his teammates rather than long stretch passes or prolonged stick handling while waiting for a big play to present itself. That will serve him well as a young player in the NHL but over time, I wouldn't mind him holding onto the puck a little bit longer and trying to make a great play rather than just taking the good ones. The few times he has done it in Kingston, he's made some good plays, so I know he's capable of it. Skating-wise, Wright is mostly just okay. His stride is a little short and it keeps him from reaching top speed, but he's very nimble on his feet and can build speed moving laterally, which helps make up for this. As stated before, his most notable trait is how strong on his skates he is, and how much that helps him win puck battles. 
It seems to be very natural for him, which frees him up to focus on using his stick and gaining control of the puck. I know that doesn't seem like something that belongs in this skating category, but trust me, it does and it'll help him a lot at the next level. Besides the incredible goal scoring numbers that Wright has been able to put up as a young OHL player, I think I'm even more excited by what I see from him away from the puck. Even as a 16 year old, you could tell he has a great idea for where the puck is going and what other teams are trying to do. This hockey IQ serves him well at both ends of the ice. In the offensive zone, he's shown a great understanding of where to be and how to get behind defenses to create space for himself, or to be in a position to have the best look at a rebound. Defensively, he displays an above average understanding of his coverage responsibilities and a knack for when to press aggressively looking to break out and when to slow it down and take his man or the puck out of a play. So much importance is being placed on two-way play for young centers now at younger ages than ever before. Wright has what it takes to come into the NHL and not only hold his own, aka not be a liability, but to be an occasional difference maker even. Especially with the strides he's made between his first OHL season and what he's done this year, where it is clear rounding out his game has been a focus of his. All that Bergeron tape is paying off. But what about the areas he can improve on? The number one thing I would say is also what I've heard many others say as well. He's looked passive at times this year, and too often seems to be going through the motions out on the ice, rather than pushing and staying hungry and aggressive. My personal theory on this, and I want to make it very clear that this is my own opinion as someone who has no knowledge of Wright as a person or a player, is that he's just focused on getting himself ready for the NHL. He's spoken many times about his desire to improve his two-way play, and I think that's all we're seeing. I know that sounds like he should be hustling more, but I think he's studying the game as it's happening. When I look at him, I see somebody who's taking it in, watching the game as much as I see someone who's playing it. This obviously isn't the best case scenario for his junior team, but it could help him a lot next year in the NHL and later on throughout his career. A player working on themselves at the expense of their current team isn't something that's seen that often in hockey. And again, he's not exactly hurting his team either by the way, he's just not lighting the world on fire as many thought he would. But it has been a part of the development of many young 21st century athletes. Whether it's the college football player skipping a bowl game or a season to stay healthy for the draft, or a young basketball player going overseas to better their game in a professional environment rather than in a lone college season. Is Wright just the first hockey player to do something similar? I don't know, but I don't think his lack of fire this year is just because he doesn't care. There is something more there, I just don't know exactly what it is. Looking ahead to the NHL, 20 goals as an 18 year old isn't an unrealistic expectation for Wright, if he's in the right situation that is. Points wise, probably looking around the 35 to 45 point mark as his vision and playmaking are not fully developed and for his first year in the NHL, whatever team that drafts him is just going to want him to play his game focus on goal scoring and defending as he adjusts to the NHL both on and off the ice. Or at least that's what I would do. Beyond that, there's no reason to think that Wright can't or won't be a top line center. Is he going to put up McDavid like numbers? Probably not, but his two way play and scoring potential are deserving of the hype and are sure to make fans of whatever team drafts him happy for years to come. But what are your thoughts on Shane Wright? Does the scoring dip this year scare you? Is he just the latest overhyped youngster that the media has created? Or is he just getting himself ready for the NHL and working on himself? Let me know down below in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you soon.